Hey y'all and welcome back. Today I am sharing with you my five minute makeup routine that is fast and easy and gets me out the door in a snap. I am also going to go over a couple of questions I've had about going gray. So I figured I would kind of do both at the same time and let's get started. Now I will tell you that I have already washed my face and um, brushed my teeth of course. I've also put in these Lumify eye drops. Y'all, <laughs> these things are magical. With menopause, I have had the worst issue with super red and dry eyes. And when I wake up, if you saw that before picture on the thumbnail, my eyes are like super red. The Lumify eye drops are the best thing I have found to actually whiten the whites of the eyes. <laughs> the white part of the eyes, of course. They're not cheap. It is about $17 for this tiny little bottle, but they do last a long time. Magic, magic. So I've already put those in. Um, it does take a little bit for them to work and my eyes seem to be a little more red this morning for some reason. It is really dry here. It's like 30 degrees and super dry outside. So that probably has a little bit to do with it. So let's get going with the makeup. The first thing that I start with is this BB cream by L'Oreal. I've been using this for probably close to eight to 10 years maybe. It is, it says it's a magic beautifier and I will agree with that. It goes on sort of like a tinted moisturizer, which I really like. It's super lightweight and it goes on white, but eventually turns color and it does help to cover up um, the red that I have in my face because I do have kind of minor rosacea. So let's go ahead and put that on. While I'm putting this on, I've had a few people ask me why I decided to go gray. And there's a couple of different answers to that. The, the first one was it just really got to be a pain in the butt to keep color in my hair. I have hair that grows really fast. So I pretty much was going in every two to three weeks to get my hair colored. And as you can imagine, that got to be, well, A, time consuming and B, pretty expensive. I am living on a budget these days and spending close to $200 a month to get my hair done, well, that got to be a little unreasonable. But what really it came down to is that I was in Alaska this summer, and if you missed that series, I do have a few videos up of what it was like living in Alaska with my partner while he worked on the fishing boat. Getting ready in an RV was hard enough as it was, but needing to color my hair every three weeks in the RV with no hot water, well, <laughs> let's just say that wasn't going to happen. So I started letting it grow out this summer. I did have like one of those little crayon things that I would color in the skunk line as it grew out. Then I got some of the spray stuff and that worked pretty well and I would use that to cover up the gray. Finally, by the time I got back to North Carolina in the fall, it was probably a good two inches grown out. It was definitely a very obvious skunk line. So I knew I needed to do something else, but We'll get into that in a minute because really the question was why I decided to go gray. So the first reason was because it just got to be a pain in the butt. Second reason was that it got to be really expensive and I just don't have the money or time that I want to be spending on it right now. The third reason is that when I went to Portland to help my daughter uh, get ready to go to Japan, I stayed with some friends of mine and two of my friends that I've known for, oh, almost 30 years now, had both already decided to go gray and they were beautiful. And I was like, well, why am I holding on to this old version of myself that I have to have dark hair in order to still be pretty <laughs> at 50 when these women are gorgeous with their gray hair? So that was pretty much the tipping point that finally I decided that I was gonna go all in on growing my gray out and becoming a silver sister. Okay, now that I have the BB cream on, it goes on light enough that you still see the skin underneath, but it does help to even out the tone. I've also noticed with menopause that I've had a little bit more of an issue with a little bit of dark circles here under my eyes, and I still have a little bit of red on my chin that I like to kind of get rid of. So I use this NARS concealer and I just dab a little bit on here, a little bit under my eyes. I don't go too far. I just want to cover up 
that little dark area right there. And then I dab a little bit on my chin. Then I have my spongy thing, my beauty blender, I guess is what they're officially called. And I'll blend all that in. And I kind of blend it up over my nose and kind of around some of the other red areas down on my face, a little bit up here. Because the red seems to be concentrated on the middle of my face. So I do that around my chin and done. I did bring a washcloth in. I usually just wash my hands, but since I'm in my office doing this, I brought a washcloth in to get my fingers all clean. And then the next step is to use a little bit of bronzer. And I love this Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. Oh man, again, it's another product that I have used for years and years and years. I now use it in order to do the, um, oh, what do they call it? The toning, or not the toning, the contouring <laughs> around my face. Super fast and simple. Oh, don't judge me on this brush. It probably needs to be cleaned. But I just use a little bit on here, um, tap it off, go up the cheek a little bit, a little bit on the ball of the cheek on the other side a little bit on the ball up here not much just enough to contour a little bit on the forehead and then i do go around the jawline y'all i'm a little sensitive about this little extra stuff right here under the chin i just it makes me feel like I have a little bit of a double chin. I probably do have a little bit of a double chin, but I use this bronzer and I pull it all the way down my neck to kind of shade that area to make it look like the jowls have kind of disappeared, hopefully. That's the idea anyway. I'm hoping that that's what it does. The next question is, what am I doing to let the gray grow in so it's not so obvious? I went to a hairdresser and she um, did some magic <laughs> and I I can't tell you the exact steps she took because you know it's all Greek to me but if you would like a video on me going to the hairdresser and having her show you what she did to the gray to kind of blend it in a little bit better I will do that so let me know in the comments below if that is something that you guys would like to see you no know, she did some foils she lightened up the hair to take some of the color out uh, that you know I've been coloring over the years and I'm not sure she actually did any she did a little bit of toner on the gray but I'm not sure how much that she put in there one thing I have been using that I think helps make the gray slash white a little more vibrant is the blue conditioner and it also keeps my hair feeling super soft I feel like this this white gray area is the softest that I have, my hair has ever been. Y'all, I just realized I'm, I'm wet on my sleeve from where I washed my face earlier. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have our bronzer on and now we are ready for my mascara. All I, I don't do anything on my eyes for my five minute makeup other than put mascara on. I just feel like I don't really need a whole lot else. Sometimes when I wear too much eye makeup, I feel like it makes my eyes look a little like more wrinkly. <laughs> So I just stick to a really good waterproof mascara so that it doesn't spread and bleed off onto my eyes. And I'm loving this Bambi Eye Mascara. This is by far my favorite waterproof mascara. And when I'm doing my five minute makeup, I don't do anything with my eyebrows. Like I said, I don't put any more eye makeup on other than my mascara. I do load up on the outside of my top lashes to make them look a little more fuller and longer and then i just do that oops i fell a little bit there and then it just wipes off super easy i'll do one coat sometimes i'll go back and do a second coat especially like i said on this outside corner of the eyelashes where i want them to be a little bit thicker kind of give that look of having false eyelashes on i have not attempted to try to wear the like magnetic false lashes or anything i like to look pretty <laughs> I am not really a super girly girl. I'm the lazy pretty girl. Well, I shouldn't say I'm, I'm the lazy makeup girl. <laughs> I want it to be easy and quick and be able to get out the door, but still look like a million bucks. Don't we all, right? And I think this is part of being better after 50 is acknowledging that you want to look good and you want to look your best and you don't want to look like a grandma after 50. But y'all, we just don't have the time to put 30 minutes to an hour into putting our face on every day. So 
this is what I do. I hope it's helpful to you. I use my little spoolie thing to just separate my eyelashes. I'll tame my eyebrows. Okay, you guys. Who else out there has had the crazy eyebrow situation happen to them as they've gotten older? I get some of these eyebrows that are, woo, they are like, I'll pluck them and they're like two inches long. It's insane. I can't believe it. So I try to keep my eyebrows trimmed down and, and you know, kind of groomed as much as possible. But sometimes in the morning, those things have a mind of their own. Okay, so that's all I do for eyes. Lastly, we are going to do the lips. Now I do line my lips every day. I just feel like it keeps the lipstick on better. It keeps it from going into the fine lines that um, unfortunately have formed around my lips as I've gotten older. And I am, I'm not a smoker and yeah, I have not used straws pretty much most of my life. I've never I've never really liked drinking out of a straw. Even not doing those things, you still end up with all these fine lines around your lips. So I find if I line my lips, the lipstick stays on so much better. And this is just a inexpensive little liner from Wet n Wild. I love it. L'Oreal used to have some that were similar to this, but they stopped making it. And I like it because it's one of those that twist up and it's not something that you have to sharpen. I refuse to get any other makeup products that you have to sharpen. Sharpening eye pencils and lip pencils, it's just a pain in the butt and it never works out, the tip breaks off. So I am all about anything that you can just uh, twist up and you don't have to sharpen. So I'm gonna line my lips, which means I have to stop talking for a second. <laughs> I do a pretty thick line when I line my lips because I don't want it to just end up being this weird looking thin line around my lips. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You've seen it on older ladies and I want it to blend with the lipstick a little bit better. Okay, so um, I almost get my whole lip done with the liner. Like I said, again, I just feel like it keeps the lipstick in place a lot better. When we come to lipsticks, <laughs> I am much, much like shoes with lipsticks. I love shoes. If I won the lottery, I would probably have 250 pairs of shoes. So with lipsticks, I have so many lipsticks. I just, I like to pick them up every once in a while. Like I said, I don't wear a lot of other makeup, but lipstick is something that I love to have. It probably boils back down to, my mom used to tell me that if you went out the door anywhere, no matter what you had on, always make sure that you have on lipstick. And part of it is that we, my mom and I both have very pale lips. So the, the lips kind of blend into the rest of our face. So I think she was more, you know, wanting me to make sure that I had something that just didn't make my lips just blend into the rest of my face. Anyway, it has created um, a, an obsession with lipstick. So today's lipstick I am using is, I think, a L'Oreal and it's called Spiced Cider. And I'll, I'll link all of the products that I'm using today in the description below in case you're interested. I think all of them can be found on Amazon. If not, you know, I'll find a Walmart link or something like that. So we're gonna put this on. And that's it. That's all I do for my five minute makeup every morning. Obviously I need to go get my hair done or get my hair done. Obviously I need to do my hair before I walk out the door and put some jewelry on. As it is, this is the face. So let me go do my hair real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, all done. Because I curled my hair yesterday, I didn't really have to do a whole lot to it today. And you can see that it holds the curl pretty well. I only wash my hair probably about twice a week, if even that. Sometimes it's only once a week, especially right now while it's super dry in the winter time. And you can see a little bit more of the gray blending into the, the blonde. I kind of like how it's ended up being an ombre sort of look. It was unintentional. I didn't realize that was what was going to happen, but it's kind of, it's kind of cool, I think. Let me know if you are growing out your gray hair and if you have some advice for me or for the other ladies who are considering becoming Silver Sisters. I'm, I would love to hear your advice and I'm sure they would too. Let me know 
in the comments below if you want to see more videos like this. I will say again, I'm not really a makeup person or even a big skincare person. I do have a skincare routine that I do in the morning and the evening that I'm thinking about sharing with you guys later. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see as well. I hope you all have a fabulous day. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and feel free to follow me over on Instagram for more behind the scenes life. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.